Hello everybody, we are in week 10 of this particular course. In the previous class we had seen, uh, previous week we had seen counter design, uh, different aspects of counter. So, uh, we shall begin with a quick recap of uh, that and whatever we had done, the designing aspect of it, the counter circuit if you remember that uh, with clock trigger it was moving from one state to another and output was generating. Uh, out, output was generated based on how it was getting decoded. Okay. Uh, a general uh, uh, type of sequential uh, logic circuit design will also consider external input. Okay. So, in this class we shall consider that uh, circuit design, sequ sequential circuit design where the uh, external input will also be there and we shall take two routes one is called uh, mode model based route, another is milli model based route and uh, so let us see before that quick recap. So, we had seen that counter uh, records the number of uh, times a particular event has occurred by advancing state which is unique okay? and uh, these states could be can be sequentially going up uh, and uh, it is called up counter and can come down, then it is called down counter. And in asynchronous uh, sequential, uh, asynchronous counter we had seen that the uh, consecutive flip flops are triggered uh, through a rippling. Okay? So, one flip flop output is triggering the next flip flop uh, clock. Okay? So, that way there is a delay uh, between uh, the triggering of uh, consecutive flip flops and this delay is uh, cumulative. Okay, which can cause issue uh, in certain cases. Decoding is very important and uh, later on we had seen that uh, for certain cases uh, there could be glitches and that glitches uh, need to be removed uh, for sequential logic uh, operation. Synchronous counter we had seen that all the clocks are getting uh, triggered at the same time, so at same by the same clock uh, edge. Okay in edge triggered uh, counter and uh, we had seen cascaded counter if uh, mod uh, 2 is cascaded with mod 3 then mod 6 counter was there and uh, 2 is 5 mod 10 counter was there. So, in general you can see uh, that uh, m with n it will be m, cross, m multiplied by n uh, that will be the mod value. Okay? And the order of uh, this cascading is also important that is what we had seen. So, uh, mod 2, mod 5, if you uh, put uh, one after another, then you get VCD counter. Uh, if, if you have mod 5 first and then mod 2, then it is biquinary counter. Okay? And to get different kind of modulo number, we can use asynchronous reset, but uh, that uh, not for glitch and uh, we can have standard sequ uh, sequential logic circuit design concept applied for counter design, okay? where this glitch can be removed. Okay? And as I said, uh, in this class we are looking at uh, more general uh, approach for sequential logic circuit design, not specifically tied being tied with counter. Counter was a, a specific case, so uh, this is a more general case in which we have got uh, input to the circuit, okay, sequential logic circuit and it is generating certain output. Okay. And uh, inside the circuit, the uh, there is an advancement of uh, state. Okay, state changes one after another. Okay, so these are the three important things, right? So these primary inputs. Okay, where we are seeing uh, primary input, uh, this there will be uh, certain input which will be generated inside the circuitry. Okay, by uh, those, those can be considered text, you know, intermediate input okay? and accordingly there will be intermediate output. So, these primary inputs that is coming from the external world, right? uh, they are affecting changes in the state, okay? but it is not affecting change in the output that is made available to the outside world. So, there is no direct connection. You can see the primary output that is generated from combinatorial logic 
okay, is developed from the state or the memory elements or the flip flops or the registers. Okay. These memory elements or flip flops or the state gets influenced by this primary input of course. So, indirectly it affects, okay, not directly. Right? So, that is what you see in Moore model that the primary outputs are generated solely from the states. Okay? Whereas, the state, the change of the state that occurs based on certain logic, certain input that are presented before the flip flops at the input of the flip flops. Okay? So, that is generated, that is generated through primary inputs and the previous state, the current state. Uh, uh, so, the together they divide, derive, uh, uh, they drive the next state. Okay? So, that is certain logic, in, uh, combination logic will be there by which you are generating the next state value. So, this is a general block diagram level representation of Moore model. Okay? So, output will be generated solely from the uh, uh, states. So, whenever state change takes place, after that, as long as that state remains, so that means that for that clock period, the output will become available, which remain available, okay? And it is synchronized with the clock. So, state uh, uh, clocking, state change, output available, okay? After whatever this combinatorial logic, propagation delay is there, okay? Is it clear? So, that is how mood model works, right? So, primary input to uh, for changing the state together with the current state and the state only defining the primary output. Now, we had seen such circuit before, okay? Moore model we have seen before, if you remember, uh, though uh, it was not explicitly a uh, primary input as such, but if you remember the uh, up down counter, this is a section of it, okay? Just we have taken uh, two bit counter, so mod 4, right? So, there was an external input, say m, okay? and m you could change any time. So, if you, if you keep m is equal to 0, right, at any given state, so say it is 0, 0. So, it is up count mode. So, m is equal to 0, it was going to 0, 1, okay. And m is equal to 1, it was going to down count mode 1, 1. So, that is the way state transition diagram uh, would be written, okay. Then, uh, M is, if it is at 0, 1, m is equal to 0, it will go to 1, 0 up count and if it is 1, it is down count. So, from 0, 1, it will go to 0, 0. So, this is the way you can, these four states, you can see for 0, it is going from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1 and for uh, 1, okay. So, it will go from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1 and again go back, going back to 0, 0, okay. Right. So, uh, in this particular case, what we had uh, seen that output can be generated since it is a mod 4 counter, a count of you know 11, uh, uh, sorry, 1 1 has uh, uh, taken place. So, this is 1 and this is 1 in uh, we are discussing it everything in binary. Okay. So, when both of them are 1, then the output is 1. So, it is solely derived from the flip flop outputs. So, flip flop outputs defining the state. So, m is not directly affecting the output. Okay? So, of course, it is a case of a mode model, right? And here we write the output alongside the state value okay? within the state. Okay? So, this each circle defines the state. So, 0, 0, the output is 0, 0, 1, output is 0, 1, 0, output is 0, and 1, 1, output is 1. Is it clear? Okay? So, this is one thing, but still we are analyzing it. We shall look at the synthesis part later. Okay? So, this, so this is the objective of today's class. We shall come to that. Mealy model. So, from the discussion we had on Moore model, you can expect that Mealy model will be related to it, but somewhat different. Yes. Uh, in this, of course, the primary input and the uh, current state, current state Okay. So, together the current state, together they have a part of the combinatorial logic okay, which will be deciding the next state. Okay. This is similar to Moore model. So, primary input and current state values together through a combinatorial logic 
is defining the next state inputs and next state is obtained. Okay? But another part of the combinatorial logic okay, is also taking primary input and the current state and generating the primary output. The primary output again what I mean by this is the output that is made available to the external world. Okay? So, secondary input or secondary output these are internally generated intermediate values okay, within the logic circuit. So, I am not talking about that. So, this one the primary outputs now is having input also from primary input. Okay? Earlier in Moon model it was only from the memory or the state values, flip flop values. Okay? Is it clear? Well, that is the difference. Now, it looks okay, I mean what is the big deal about it? But when you go forward, we shall see that uh, this has got uh, you know lot of significance. Right now, what we can understand, what we can understand is that the output need not will not be synchronized with the clock. Okay, so whenever input changes in in between a clock cycle, if the input changes, so output will be changing. Okay, because if such is the logic, such is the commutator logic, right? Because it is derived from input also. Okay. Right? Any glitch, any transient value in the input will go directly to uh, this output. Okay? Now, if these are certain issues uh, associated with it, which one can consider disadvantage or you know problematic, the other issue is that if you look at the response time, okay? so whenever input changes, output can respond immediately after whatever this commutator logic propagation delay. For Moore model, if input changes accordingly the state will change and then state will generate the uh, output. Okay? So, some amount of time is required in between for the clock getting triggered. So, depends on the clock period. Okay? And also because current state and primary input together can generate output, number of states required which may, will be clearer later may be less which can affect less amount of hardware. Okay? So, these are certain things pros and cons of two models right? and accordingly to kind of you know finite state machine, mood, mood machine or milli machine can be developed okay? and each one has its own as I said advantage disadvantage and accordingly depending on our requirement we shall be using it. Clear? And have we seen some such circuit before milli model based circuit? Okay? Yes, we had seen this is also from our uh, this second part of the discussion sequential logic uh, uh, based circuit on, on the earlier uh, classes. So, there we had seen one such circuit. Okay. So, there uh, if you see that if this is x, okay, this is the external input. So, this is connected directly to the output generating commutator logic over here this uh, AND gate and this is Q bar. right? So, what does it say? The corresponding state transition diagram is this, this we have analyzed before. So, I am not doing it again. So, you refer to that particular class okay, uh, in the beginning in the, of the uh, sequential logic circuit part that particular week, okay, week 6, week 7. Okay? So, week 7 uh, you can see it. Right? So, uh, here whenever this input is at state 0, uh, sorry the flip flop is at state uh, 0, okay, the circuit is at state 0. So, at that time if A 1 comes, right, immediately the output is getting generated, output is getting generated as high, okay. otherwise the output remains 0. Okay. So, 0 and 1, 0 here means it is 1, so this 1 and whenever it becomes 1, it does not depend need to depend on the clock. So, that is why it is called not synchronized with the clock. Right, but again the response is immediately it, it, it can it can respond. Okay. So now let us look at because we are now look into the synthesis design uh, aspect of it. So for that we take up uh, we one problem which we first define. Okay, very simple problem. So something which you had seen before in a different context. Uh, uh, so a sequence detector. right? Did not we see it for the shift register and other applications in those cases? We have seen sequence detector. right? So, here we are, we are seeing it in a different point of view. Okay? Uh, so, 
the sequence to be detected is very simple 1 1 0 ok. So, first bit should be 1, second bit should be 1 and third bit should be 0 as soon as it is done then the output will say output of the circuit will say that the sequence this bit pattern has been detected ok. So, it will go to 1 otherwise it will remain 0 ok. Is it clear? So, if it is shift register based or register based then, then uh, this uh, three such flip flops will be required and we will push it and then we will be having a x nor kind of you know logic circuit which we had seen before ok. So, here let us see uh, whether we require three flip flops or less ok. So, now for that the first step required is defining the states ok. So, the problem now we are breaking into sub problems ok. So, these are the this is what needs to be done ok. So, for that the circuit should move from one state to another. So, we initialize the circuit with a state say A ok, which means that none of the bit in the prescribed sequence is correctly decoded, decoded which is reasonable is not it ok, because the, the circuit is just reset, it's just you have begun you have begun to sample the input data stream ok. Now, if you receive one bit correctly, so you say the circuit moves from state A to state B. So, that is B, two bits detected correctly, three, Four, uh, uh, three bits detected correctly, D. Okay. So, A is no, no bit, B is one bit, C is two bit and three, uh, D is three bits detected correctly, is it fine? And these are the this is the requirement three bits are detected correctly right and whenever you go to state D. So, mood model it will generate output. So, that is the idea ok. Now, we need the state transition diagram and once we have the state transition diagram state table and all and those those journey we shall we know ok that part we shall see later. So, first let us see what would be the state transition diagram for this one. So, here is the state transition diagram. So, you begin with state A ok, this 0 means no uh, output is 0 of course, uh, no bit is detected output should be 0. So, that, that part we shall take discuss later. So, first is A. Now, when it is at A input data stream is coming it can it can be 0 or it can be 1 both are possible is it ok. So, if 0 comes then it will stay at uh, A and if it 1 comes right it has to go to state b because b refers one bit is correctly decoded so first bit decoded is proper, properly de uh, decoded out of 110 okay so it goes to b when it is at b if it receives one then second bit is correctly detected so it goes to c so that is your c okay that is what is happening here but after getting 1, if it receives 0, then what it, it has to do? It has to do all over again this 1, 1 0, 1, 1 0, right. So, after receiving 1, if it receives 0, it has to restart the process. So, that means, it has to go back to state A, which signifies that no bit is correctly detected, because the sequence at best could be 1 0, 1 1 0, ok. After uh, B, you received A and then these three bits right clear. Now, at C possibility is that it can get a 0 or it can get a 1 right. So, C means you have already got two thing detected uh, uh, correctly detected right. So, if 0 comes all three are done. So, you will go to D over here right. But instead of 0, if you get a 1, 1, 1, 1, what will you do? You will stay at C because after that if a 0 comes, you should be able to detect the uh, sequence ok. So, that is the logical development. So, at C, if you receive a 1, you stay at C ok. Now, when you are at D, 1, 1, 0 is currently detected. So, 1 is there output is 1 right and when at D if you receive a 0 
right so that means 1 1 0 then again 0 right so after that if you keep continuing detecting the sequence then again you will require 1 1 0 kind of thing so basically that is the initial state you have to go back that is no bit is properly detected so it is going to a and after 1 1 0 if you receive a 1 okay that means first bit is correctly detected for the next sequence which could be 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 right so that is what you see over here that it is going to be this is the corresponding state transition diagram okay so a output is 0 b output is 0 c output is 0 and d output is 1 is it fine now if you look at, at an example case you can do it yourself you can take any random you know input you know getting 0 first bit second in the clock cycle 1 0 1 1 0 this way right and you can follow this transition diagram and see what is happening so state initially it is 0 so it is at a it receives a 0 it goes to state a it receives a 1 goes to state b it receives a 0 goes to state a b from b it goes to 0 a okay it receives a 1 it goes to b receives a 1 goes to c receives a receives a 1 okay 1 1 again 1 so it will remain at c then 0 it goes to d and whenever it goes to d it generates a 1 okay so the next clock cycle it is happening so 1 1 0 has taken uh, you know place over here in 4 5 6 and in 7 it is happening similarly uh, 7 8 9 10 if you look at another 1 1 0 is over here and next clock cycle it is getting completed here 9th but the output will be at 10th clock cycle is it fine now compared to this same problem if we try to realize using milli model okay so state definitions are similar right similar but we are not defining d here why let us see we did not okay initially we can define d but we will say we shall see that d state d is not required okay 3 bits correctly decoded why let us see because we can use the input hmm, to get the output directly so state a okay 0 comes it will remain at state a initial state so 0 output is 0 1 comes okay it goes to b output is 0 right because 1 1 0 is required then only the output will be 1 state b 0 comes it comes back to the initial state similar to what we had done before output is 0 state b which is 1 bit correctly recorded 1 comes so 2 bits get correctly decoded it will go to c which it has okay and output is 0 at that time is it fine now at state c it can receive 0 or 1 and we know in milli model current state value if you remember the model and the input and this is the computerial logic together you can generate the output right so c an input has come 0 it need not go to the next state immediately based on this that it is at c an input is 0 right c means 1 1 2 bits are properly detected and next bit is also in the right order you can generate the output in the same clock cycle itself right and 1 1 0 then you can go back to the initial state a is it clear so that is why d was not required and at c if it receives 1 that means 1 1 again it has got 1 right so it will remain at state c with output 0 is it fine so this is the corresponding milli model that you get for the same problem right and if you look at the, that same example the example that i had we had discussed before the input is coming in this manner okay so say state change is taking place so zero if a comes you know if a is the initial state 0 comes it is a 1 it is b next state is b 0 comes again it goes back to a 1 comes it is b again 1 comes it goes to c again 1 comes it is c 
right now if zero comes right you can take immediately take the decision in the same clock cycle so it is at c the output is certain value and together with uh, the flip flop output which is representing c and then this input x has come so you have a commutator logic circuit together in that clock cycle itself you can take the decision so earlier it was in 7th and similarly for the next case was in 10th now it is in 6th and 9th one cycle before is it fine okay so this is how it works now it is possible to have a conversion rule established between mealy and mood models okay uh, so if you design it in one model right your state transition diagram and then you decide it to move to another model right you can start the exercise right from the beginning or you can use this conversion rule and get the circuit get the corresponding state transition diagram of the other type okay so you see there are some basic rules the rules are like this so here in this state this is the milli model so all the uh, paths that are leading to state a okay from other places you see it is 0 and this is 0 0 0 0 1 0 so all the outputs are 0 so you can very well take the input over here this uh, sorry this output 0 within this one this state without any ambiguity no conflict and you can write 0 0 1 here right so output will be generated only when of course it goes to state a not in the that previous clock cycle whatever actually was causing it that particular state value and 0 together output was 0 so it is not like that next clock say, uh, uh, output will be generated from this only because it is mood model but we can write it without any ambiguity here it is 0 1 so there is no other thing so we can take the one inside it so this is the usual thing where we have no uh, you know confusion or conflict compared to that see the next one okay so what the state a okay so here t2 and t3 these two path 0 0 and 1 0 the output is 0 and 0 but for t1 the output is 1 okay so if you put inside a 0 mood model means output cannot be generated from the input and the p and previous state is not it so it has to be from the state in which it goes into right but you cannot put 0 or 1 i mean both the things are not possible in one state so what you need to do you need to split the state so you can see that a is got a has got split a1 and a2 okay so in one where t1 is leading right so 0 to 1 so basically you have put the 1 and t2 to t3 these two are leading you have put a2 okay which is output is 0 and now a was going from uh, from a b and t4 were there so same thing b and t4 there is no conflict over here so 0 0 so there will be one path going for 1 okay to t4 another path to t4 and b okay there is only uh, there is no conflict only one one so inside the one you will take the uh, inside b you will take the one is it clear and the third thing in a situation like this in a situation like this where there is a basically conflicting requirement in the output so t1 0 1 t2 t3 it is uh, 1 0 and 0 0 so basically the output is 0 and 0 and here the output is 1 okay so you know that we need to split but in addition to that what you see a there is a t4 unlike this particular case where for one it is staying in a okay and the output is zero right so when you split it so this t4 will be part of this one a2 where the output is zero okay so that is what you have done and if it goes from t uh, goes to a1 which is output 1 via t1 so 0 1 after 0 it has got here if it is 1 then it will stay back here so which is output is generated 0 so 
if it is getting a 1, it will come into a 2 that is 0. Okay, right? And a is going to b and the output of is 1. So, output is contained in b and for both the cases now a 1 and a 2, right? For 0, it will go to b. Is it clear? And similarly, the other way, the opposite is also true. And to end, we shall just look at uh, the Billy model and Moore model that we had developed. Okay, if we apply this rule, so either we can get directly the thing. Yes, we can get it, right? So this was the Milli model, okay? And this was the Moore model. And if you see for B, okay, so this is only case where the output is zero. So we can take it inside. There is no problem. For C, there is no conflict. This is 0, this is also 0. So, we can take 0 inside. There is no problem. Okay. So, what, where is the problem? Problem is there for A and I have marked it. So, this is 1 and this is 0. Okay. These are the problematic case. Right? So, we need to split the A. And in the design process, we did not do it. Now, we can see that if we split it, we can name it A1, A2 or it has been named there A and D. Okay. So, one of them is having 0. So, is A is having 0 and D will be having the other one is having 1. Is it okay? So, it is similar to your A1, A2 following this principle. Right? Okay. Now, uh, the other cases when this A was there. So, 0 when it is 0 it will be looping itself. So, it is 0, it is looping itself like similar to in this example 1. Okay? And whenever it is at 0 and if it gets a 0, then it should go to A. That has ha what has happened you can see. Similar to if it gets a 1, it, it has come to A2. So, similar over here. Okay? The other thing from A, it was going to B for 1 at the input. Now, it has been split. So, for both the cases, a and D, it will go to B next state. Right? So, that is what you see over here for 0. This, these are the two things that they, it had visited. So, similarly over here, what you can see. Okay? So, the opposite when you apply, there also you, you have to look at where these values are different and then you can think of joining them. Okay? Otherwise, these cases are straightforward. I mean, you know, uh, there is no such option for joining, only cases uh, over here like this you can join to get a Milli model uh, like this or Milli to mood we have already seen. Is it fine? So, with this, uh, we would like to conclude. So, we have seen that mood model input affects internal state and not output directly, output is generated directly from the internal states. Okay, and it is synchronized with the clock. Milli model input affects both internal state and output directly. Output changes whenever there is a change in the input, okay, which is not necessarily synchronized with the clock. If some transients are there, it will get uh, uh, go to the output directly. Okay. And uh, usually we have seen that uh, more states were required, three states uh, were required in milli and more it was four for the given problem. Milli model response faster, one clock cycle ahead we had seen compared to mood model. Uh, mood model is safer in the sense that the out uh, input does not directly go to the output. So, uh, transients, glitches will not get passed. So, when the clock trigger comes by which input is sufficiently sta stabilized, at that time only the output will be available. Okay? And we have seen that milli machine can be converted to milli machine, uh, milli machine, uh, mood machine, and uh, also the opposite is also possible. Okay, by applying suitable conversion rule. Thank you.